Hello, my name is Corey Tomlinson and I'm a member of Nuix's marketing team. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, The Magic of Workerside Scripting, where we'll take a look at the power and flexibility it can offer you working inside of Nuix. With us today is Alex Chachistamatis. Alex is a solutions engineer at Nuix and he has extensive knowledge of on-premise email archives and cloud-based email solutions. Alex has been involved with some of the largest email archive migrations in the world, and many of those have leveraged the powerful capabilities of worker-side scripting. Prior to joining Nuix, Alex spent the early part of his career working with the Philadelphia Police Department as a systems and network administrator, where he was responsible for the daily operations for the fifth largest metropolitan department in the country. Alex, I'll hand it over to you. Take it away. Thanks for that introduction, Corey. Today, we will look at demystifying the concept of worker-side scripting and answering three common questions that most people have about it. One, what is it? Two, how does it work? And finally, three, how can I use it? Let's address the first question. What is worker-side scripting? Well, we all know what makes Nuix so special and unique, and that's the patented Nuix engine, which consists of parallel processing technology and binary level text extraction. But we wanted to continue to grow and shape the Nuix engine to allow you to solve your data problems and challenges more efficiently and effectively. On many occasions, we understood that it was very important to provide a way to interact with the data before all of it was finished processing and have it made available inside of a Nuix case when it was completed. With that as our end goal, we created the worker-side scripting technology, which uses the power of the Nuix engine and has been available since the 6.2 release. At its core, worker-side scripting allows additional functionality to be added to a worker so it can be used on an item as it's being processed. Worker-side scripting was born out of the need to solve unique data challenges by allowing for use case specific workflows and complete flexibility. Imagine being able to search across terabytes of data as quickly as possible to find only the responsive items from a defined list of search criteria. That sort of workflow is now easier than ever with this technology. The advantages of it include performing operations at the earliest opportunity, improving efficiency, and allowing for a greater level of flexibility over your data set. Think about how useful it would be to manage your case sizes by dictating exactly what you want to add to the index. Or imagine how efficient it would be to perform operations like search and tag, adding custom metadata, date filtering, or even performing OCR operations while the data is still processing and not having to wait until the case is finished. The possibilities are truly endless. First, let's look to see what a traditional e-discovery workflow might look like. First, you ingest raw data into a Nuix case. Then you might perform some sort of date call technique. Then you might OCR your images and documents. And finally, you might finish your workflow off by updating custom metadata for the project. All four of these can be consolidated into one worker-side scripted approach using this technology. You simply would create your worker-side script and drop it inside of your worker script tab in the Nuix Workstation UI. And then that logic would be applied to your workers individually as they're processing the data. For example, you can see this worker actually drops the item because it doesn't meet the date requirement. Or this worker processes the item because it meets the date requirement and it even performs an OCR and updates the custom metadata. Now let's address the second question. How does it work? In the Nuix workstation, under evidence processing settings, you'll see a tab called worker script. This is where you can paste custom code written in either ECMA script, Python, or Ruby, the same languages supported in our workstation scripting console. You can find additional information about the specific methods and callbacks using the Nuix scripting API or visit our developer portal. Once you've pasted the script in here and clicked OK, that script will now be deployed while the workers are processing your data set. From a scripting perspective, there are several key functions which can be defined to enable you to work with the processing of each item that a worker hits. For example, you can use Nuix worker item callback worker item when a worker has a new item for processing. You can use Nuix worker item callback in it at the start of processing an item. You can use Nuix worker item callback close when processing completes on an item. 
you can use worker item process embedded to optionally process embedded content within an item. And finally, you can use worker item set process item to optionally process an item or not. For all other information about worker side scripting, be sure to check out the Nuix scripting API guide, which is available on download.nuix.com, as well as your Nuix installation directory. Be sure to check out the Nuix community as well. It's a really great place to read and share knowledge about Nuix technology, connect with peers, collaborate to solve challenges, and reach out to Nuix experts. There are some things that must be taken into consideration before using a worker side script. First, it is very important to remember that the worker items are still in their raw binary format, which means that the properties of an item can be malformed, so you may want to build some buffers around that. Also, date and times are being accessed in Jota time, so you'll need to factor that into your preferred scripting language. And the text of an item is case sensitive, and symbols are not tokenized to whitespace. Second, Traditional Nuix search syntax is not necessarily available at the point in time that the worker side script is being run on the item, since the item is still in its raw format. Third, conditional item matching can impact performance whether you're using standard Nuix search techniques or regular expressions. And finally, standard MIME type behavior still applies, so you still have to process containers in order to get to specific data within them. Now that we know what worker side scripting is and how it works, let's look at some of the use cases to see how it can be used in real world scenarios. In our first example, we will look at leveraging this worker script technology to add custom metadata to items stored inside of the Nuix case. This custom metadata will be based on the worker GUID that processed the item. And remember, this is happening in real time while the data is being processed into the case. This is not a post-processing operation. This could be very useful downstream when performing searching or calling techniques, or even when preparing for reloads or an OCR workflow. In our first example, which is a very short worker side script, we can see that the first thing we do is define our opening worker item callback. Next, we're telling the Nuix worker to add a tag to the item that we've just identified. We're then creating a top level tag called evidence store and this item will receive a subtag that is identical to the worker GUID that processed the item. Keep in mind, this tag could be anything. Perhaps if you want to tag it to fall within a specific date range, or maybe the text or metadata contains a certain keyword, property, or string that you're interested in, the possibilities here are endless. Adding this additional data like tags or custom metadata is a very easy way to make your downstream searching that much more effective. In our second example, we will discuss how we can perform parallel work streams to perhaps expedite certain workflows if there is a time crunch. We'll look to see how you can identify OCR candidates or encrypted content during processing so they can be remediated elsewhere while processing still continues. Again, this could be used in a project where timelines are severely compressed. Now, as we walk through this example, think about how you might be able to leverage this type of scripted workflow to perhaps export items to disk if they are of a certain type or kind, or if they match specific dates or keywords or things of that nature. Again, being able to do this while loading the data and not having to wait until the case is done is really great. This approach can help save you time and money and give you access to your OCR candidate data as soon as it's been processed. The first thing we do before defining our item is to set a location on the file system that we want to use as our OCR export location. Next, we can define our opening worker item callback. Then we start the main portion where we only perform the following actions if the item type is a PDF. If the PDF isn't encrypted and it has no text, we use the OCR export location that we previously identified, get the MD5 digest, and export the item. Next, if the item is encrypted or it has text, ignore it and move on. Moving on with the rest of the script, we have another section which checks to see if the item type is a TIFF. If the TIFF isn't encrypted, we use the location that we specified previously, get the MD5 digest of the item and export the item to disk. If during the operation an exception occurs, a tag would be applied to that item. 
in this case, a top level tag called processing with a sub tag called WSS error. And then custom metadata would be added to the item, which would contain any processing error information. Finally, the item is closed and the worker will move on to the next item. In our third example, we will see how with relative ease, you can leverage Numix worker side scripting to potentially reduce the size of your cases and even keep specific items from ever being processed into your case. This is really great if you can harness this with your early case assessment workflow and make your small cases even smaller. When you think about it from the bigger picture, this is a great opportunity to take advantage of expedited timelines to produce the relevant data for your reviewers downstream. In this example code, the first thing that we do is load the date class needed to perform date checks in Java. Next, we assign a date value to the variable to be used against each item. This will be a cutoff date. We then start with opening the worker item callback and setting the source item. Next, we specify that if the current item being processed by the worker is either an email or a calendar, then get that item's communication date. Next, we're going to check to see if the current item predates the cutoff that we've specified. If so, we don't process it. And just like in our previous OCR example, if during the operation an exception occurs, the item will still be processed and a tag would be applied to that item. In this case, a top level tag called processing and a sub tag called WSS error. Additionally, custom metadata would be added to the item which contains any of the processing in error information. Finally, the item is closed and the worker will move on to the next item. In our fourth and final worker side script example, we will look at how we can perform additional calls on items while the Nuix workers are processing them. This could really be useful with file format adjustments. For example, using our exposed plugins to custom convert email formats. The ability to tap into the patented Nuix engine early in your workflow and not only process data, but convert them and export them out to disk in one step could be very useful. In this final example code, we first load the data classes needed to perform date checks in Java, and then import methods from the exposed jar that come prepackaged in Nuix. Next, we set the opening worker item callback, and we define a folder on the file system where we want to export any responsive items as Outlook MSG files. Next, we determine if the item currently being processed by the worker is an RFC 822 or EML file. If it is, the workers will process the item. Next, the headers from the EML will be analyzed in order to convert the EML to an MSG MAPI format. We then have a section that is used to successfully convert the EML headers to MAPI properties. Once the EML header has successfully been converted, we write the MSG file to the export folder that was previously defined. Finally, the item is closed and the worker will move on to the next item. Now that you have a basic understanding of what worker side scripting is, how it works, and how it can be used in some very basic examples, let's look at an actual real life workflow where we're going to process some data and perform a search and tag operation as well as append some custom metadata based on communication properties, metadata properties, and text. The first thing I do is select my traditional evidence processing settings and as I've mentioned before we click on the worker script tag, select Ruby as my programming code language, copy my worker script, and paste it into the white area. We'll go ahead and click OK to get processing started. Now while processing is going, let's take a look to see what's happening on the back end. The worker side script has been configured to read input search criteria from three different CSV files. Let's start with the main metadata properties. 
Basically, the format that we're going to look at in these two CSVs will be two column. Column A, it will be the, the tag name that will be applied to the relevant items that are returned from column B, which is my search criteria. So for example, any item containing the word print or filly in the metadata properties will receive a top level tag of properties and a nested tag of print or filly. You can even get really specific and look for specific metadata properties with the name extender hash key with a, even an actual value. The returning items will receive the properties extender hash key tag name. Let's have a look at text. You could use regular expressions as well to search across your data set. So for example, my tag names are in column A and the search criteria is in column B. You can see in some examples here I've got basic keywords such as email, approval, or statement. And I even have regular expressions to find anything that were, ends in the word day or in the word box. I could even use multi-word phrases as well. Finally, let's have a look at the communication field properties. I can find data by custodian and tag it. That way I don't have to do this as a post-processing operation. Line by line, we could see here that I'm passing SMTP addresses. In some instances, I have two versions of an SMTP address for a single custodian by the name of Stephen. Again, the idea is trying to consolidate the level of effort and saving time and money from having to do these as post-processing operations and doing them upfront while the workers are processing the data set. Let's go back to the case and have a look. Now that I'm back in my Nuix case, I can already see that I have tags applied to the relevant items. As I go through my tags, I can see I have the three top level tags that I've created. Custodian, which has my relevant custodians that I've identified. Properties, which has the relevant properties that I was looking for. And even text which has items that were resulting with the words that I had in my text CSV. As I click through some of these items, I can see the custom metadata that I told it to apply to my item. So again, very useful, can be applied to multiple use cases depending on what you're looking to do. And again, it's all about saving time, money, and effort. Thanks, Alex, for sharing so much great information on worker-side scripting, and thank our viewers for taking the time to check out the webinar. If you have any questions or want to learn more about Nuix, visit us at nuix.com or connect with us on the social media platform of your choice. Also, don't forget to check out our training offerings and certification programs. Visit nuix.com training for more details, and thanks again for watching.